Radio.io Music licensing be imagined. Welcome back to Tim and Steve Show. I am Tim Beard. I'm Steve Morris. Steve. <laughs> Mine didn't work. Blow it out <laughs> Ready? <laughs> Woo! Ah. <laughs> Mess those, everything. Those things smell. This is our hundredth show. If anyone's wondering what the hell is wrong with us, are we going to wear these hats the whole time? Mm. I don't know that anybody would click on our. <laughs> <laughs> like they see us with these. Why are they wearing these hats? We're emulating the Babylonian, Egyptian, whatever they are. They're hats that have been passed on to the papacy, papacy, whatever. I guess that's a theory. (laughs) You know, they all look the same. Yeah, that's really irritating. There we go. Whoa. (laughs) <laughs> you're you're a mess. I'm a you, mess you, today. You got it all messed up. I messaged you. <laughs> Look, what the heck? I just want to point out this is our hundredth show, <laughs> and this will be the first time you've seen Steve do this. Hey, he, he's still struggling. There we go. Yes, I am not a party hat guy. Maybe the maybe the moose is. So I messaged you this morning as I'm trying to clean up all the snow, which. Welcome to New England, uh, man. Like I missed that fifty-eight degree weather we had a week or two ago. Yeah, when it was like, "Hey, spring's here." I don't know. Like my brother figured he got like twenty-four inches. I can't tell. I, well, I looked it up because you know John Paul had asked, and the official is twenty-one point five. But that seems a lot deeper than that. Those some places down like Harrisville or something that got like. 30 something inches and this is nuts and it's heavy heavy wet heavy, snow, wet snow. Uh, yeah not fun so I messaged you on out like so first try to plow this morning truck sideways won't move because once it packs down it turns to like ice and just so and I'm down at the barn so I walk back up get the excavator and I'm like plowing it and I message you I'm like hey do you want to do a show today and uh, so it'll probably be a couple hours because I'm trying to clean up this and but, you know, you plow and you're ripping up dirt because it's just the ground's not frozen now, and at least the very top isn't. And, uh, what a mess. And then so they, they originally had a two-hour delay for school then canceled it because there's so many things going on. Like, there's still people that don't have power. There's, I don't have power. I mean, yeah, we, we do. Right, because we you have the generator, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, you, you don't have power here. Um, there's a water line break on Main Street. There, excuse me. Maple Street, sorry, Maple Street, uh, that I guess is causing some issues for many people too. And then, of course, PSNH or Eversource is out trying to like still get power up in places, and people are trying to plow snow. And what a. And you're dedicated and committed. Yeah, here I am. I had said, well, I don't know if we should do a show when you texted me a few hours ago because I had to get Nikki out of the driveway, which. I don't know, it took me an hour and a half this morning, you know, between sitting on the tractor and then I snowblowed and then I, I shoveled a little bit. And I, we were able to sit down yesterday, but my back, just from standing around walking. Yes, yeah, so all day yesterday we were at voting uh, from... A little bit shoveling this morning just took my back down. So. Oh, I hear you. It's like a little before 8 to... I think we left voting at like seven forty-five, um, so I didn't get to plow yesterday. Like I plowed like to try to get into the yard. Luckily, Andrew and um, Amelia like took the excavator at one point, and, like plowed some of it, so it wasn't as bad. Oh, that's good. Um, but you know, when you like plow in, and then the truck doesn't want to move, I'm like, this this is just fun. I was like, well, I'll deal with this tomorrow. And um, huge shout out to all the voters who came out yesterday. Our budget passed. I believe it was. 182 or 92 to 132 or something like that. Um, I haven't seen any, like, usually people, someone there usually posts, like, 
the numbers, and I haven't seen it yet. Which it could just be because of the weather. It was yeah, so bad yeah, last well, night be. when we left, and then yeah. it was bad this morning. It was. It was still nasty this morning. Like I said, there's still a bunch of people without power and stuff. So, um, obviously, like me and Jenna are, were running uncontested, but um, Virginia got, Irwin, Virginia, yeah, Virginia well, and Bob, Dr. I, Scott. yeah, all them. But it's funny because so 314 votes. I got. And I'm just trying to remember from what she said last night. I believe I got it was like 232 votes. So the difference didn't vote for me at all. But then Jenna got like 254 or something. Like she got like 20 more votes on her part. And then Virginia got the most at like 264 or something. But that's, st- that's still, you know, 50 something people that didn't vote. For her, like it's just it's just funny, and some people may be like, "Listen, it's uncontested." Which, <clears throat> excuse me, if it's uncontested, unless someone's running a campaign for a write-in, which they weren't, then it, it doesn't matter, right? If you know you're basically there to vote for the budget, that's the big thing. Um, but I just thought it was interesting. I was curious. I want to know what my numbers were because that would tell me, like, you know, if I got half of what Jenna did, I'd be like, "Oh, okay, half these people do not like me." <laughs> and then Jenna's like, "Listen, if everybody likes you, you're not doing your job." And I was like. That's fair. That's fair. Yeah. But it was, it was, you know, 314 people is very, very low compared to, like, last year was, a, like, I believe, record turnout of, like, 900. And that was, a, you know, CTE was a big thing, teachers' contracts, so it was a big thing. But considering the snow, you know, the storm and the people losing power. Yeah, there were a lot of people upset about us not changing it. And now yeah. I don't know what the rules are for changing it. So you can change it. So the, there was like 70 towns in the state, I guess, that changed it, and it goes out two weeks. So it will be not next Tuesday, the Tuesday after. The problem with us is we hold it at the school, and that's already we've already scheduled that day, yesterday as voting. So I don't know if we can actually then in two weeks because like, we can legally call snow days and stuff because it's safety. I don't think the school can legally just say, "Oh, hey, we're not gonna we're gonna cancel school today because we need to vote." You know, I don't think that something they can do um, yeah. and i don't know if so. it's something that the par- most parents would want us to do right because no. we're on the edge of maxing out our snow days today Ma- yeah today i, yeah, think, is I think today the, is last, the last or now we've passed one yeah exactly right so if you cancel two weeks, the, yes you, then you're extending yes. and then it might affect graduation i mean there's a whole bunch of second yep. and third order effects that exactly and um you know, we've had a, we had, there's a couple of people that were like, we should have canceled this. And my thing, I guess, was like, we live in New England. And, I mean, unless you just moved here, like, this is normal. This happens every year. You get snow. Like, this isn't a surprise. We don't live in Florida, and suddenly you woke up to snow. That would be completely different. But we live in New England. It snows. This year has been mild. These storms like this used to be, like, when I was a kid and, like, and, like when my parents were kids, like, Every storm was like this, you know. Like we've just like wussified down as a society. I think now, if if wussified is a, is a word, I think it's a technical term. Technical term, um, but it's like we live in New England. Yeah, that's a good point. If you have good tires, and most people have all-wheel drive vehicles, or you know, and I get it. Like, hey, my buddy bailed on me because he's. I don't blame him. <laughs> He was like, yeah, the snow, I'm out of here. Yeah. It's, yeah. Like, good seeing you. But we had fun. Yeah, you guys went sledding. Um, Arrowhead is the best kept secret in Claremont. Like, if you have young kids. Oh, and there's all kinds of concerts. I mean, they were even, like, older guys. Like, I think they were from out of town and just looking for something to do. So they rode it for, like, two hours. They had fun. There was a bunch of controversy earlier this year over Arrowhead because, like, the town was going to lease it to someone or do there's something and i'm not fully up on the story so i don't want to say too much and be so wrong but i know i saw like a what's on claremont some residents were mad because they were going to change what they have now uh and they're like hey this I mean, is it was this so it was like mm-hmm. seven of us 77 dollars two hours that's cheap and you're barely walking you do have to roll out of the tube because it pulls you up on a line or whatever but it was so much fun yeah so you got you had me sold on that if i have to walk up the hill and go down and walk, yeah, yeah no, like no. we probably would have done it once or twice yeah it's like, I'm know, good. Like, I'm good. for the kids sake and then it would have been like all right y'all go have fun and no, we would have said right yeah. pull you right up and hook right in 
That's awesome. It was good. It was a good time. So I mean, that was that was fun to see his kids have a good time. You know, because they're from seven to twelve years old. So still right in that sweet spot for enjoying sledding. But again, I had a blast. Now my back, part of my back issues might be coming from riding on the tube face first. Might be. <laughs> might be, Steve. On top of shoveling, on top of. You know, I did stand quite a long time yesterday. I was whenever I taught by the end of the school day, I was ready to like lay down and like just you know straighten my back out because it was funny because it was like I don't know at the beginning, probably the first couple hours, I felt like I never stopped talking because so, like I was talking to someone, and then I saw someone I'm like, ooh, I need to talk to you, talk to them for a while, go in, and now next is super. And I'm talking to Wayne and Mary Boardman, and I mean they have like a lot to say, and they're talking for a long period of time, which that's fine. I got nothing better to do, but I felt like for a while I'm like trying to talk to you know, and you're trying to like talk to people. I'm just like that person anyway. It's like people I know, like have conversations, and we had a lot of good conversations yesterday. Yeah, I talked to that's the first time really talking with Dr. Scott and finding out. Yeah, he's, he's a wealth of information. He's a smart dude. Very smart. I think he's published, what do you say, 17 or 18 books? He's at 18. Yeah. Uh, he's a smart guy. Really? Yeah, he's traveled the world, speaks however many different languages. I mean, I mean, he's just Arabic was one, Italian, obviously Greek because he's Greek. English. Uh, English is a second language for him, and you'd never know. Nope. You wouldn't. Not with him. You really you wouldn't. Yeah, I don't pick up a. No. He speaks it better than you or I. <laughs> That's you or me. extremely true. <laughs> extremely true. He has mastered our language that we're still working on. Yeah, it's crazy. Like, and, and it was just good conversations. Like, yeah, yeah, it was just really good conversation, and you know, different views and different points of life and different upbringings, but the same general consensus about how we feel about things. You know, like. But at the end of the day, like I said, too, is like if you're a board member and you're doing it from like your heart, like you're doing it because you think this is what's best, you really can't be wrong. Like, yes, occasionally you'll do something like, ah, shoot, shouldn't have done that, shouldn't have done this. But if you're there for the right reason, for the most part, you're going to do what's right and, and, and what is right will get done. Now, if you're there with, you know, bad reasoning or, you know, for a different reason, then, yeah, it's not good, but. Uh, yeah, good conversations. Um, talked to Jim Burroughs for quite a while with Bert. And, uh, you know, we talked about the bus thing and said, like, obviously, like, he was going to meet us at one point. We talked about this already. But, like, uh, you know, it's like, yeah, it was, it was fault on both sides. And, and I agree. I agree. Yep, you're right. The communication wasn't like it should have been. Do I agree with the result? No. But there's a petition article on the or a warrant article for a 99-year lease for a dollar a year for the school that will be coming up on April 4th at the town deliberative and then voting. So please come out and support the school on this and then in the town in general. Um, you know, show up to the vote. It will be very important that day and voting day. Um, it's not a secret anymore because it's out. So we'll see what happens. Overall, it seems like the general public opinion is like for the school um well i think a lot of people realize it's their tax dollars either way a lot of people i talk to are upset because it's like yep town school where do i fit in here where do, where am i represented and i'm like yeah see i agree with that 100 percent because like i said at the board meeting which i said on the show i represent the taxpayer i don't represent just the school work I represent the taxpayer in town and what's best for them. So, yes, our budget passed yesterday. Is a dollar eighty five increase good for everybody? No. No, that's gonna hurt it's, all of our pocketbooks. It's gonna bring our taxes up a little bit more, right? Which it's already been. The flip side is it's gonna take care of Yes, and and you have to weigh those things, right? The pay disparity because how fair is it for us, even though you know what I mean, like all of us carry a burden yeah. of Paying all these increases, correct. But so do our teachers and our paras. Yeah, when your paras start at twelve dollars an hour and you have fourteen openings and you can't fill the positions, you wonder why. 
Because you can go to McDonald's and make 16 to start or more. Or 18. Or 18. Like in Claremont, that's what they had yeah. advertised. So yeah. um, this is a good step. There's some teaching positions in there. There was um, some bus driver f- funding in there for you know bus drivers because we're, we're short hurting. those or hurting hard, really hurting on those. Um, so there's a lot of that stuff in there that um, if we got lucky today. Like a lot of the town doesn't know, you know, but one or two bus drivers have an issue, then we're short. We have like one backup. Yeah, we don't have. But and with the weather, you know, we had like one of our bus drivers had uh, tree limb take down. I don't know if you heard, but took down their basically their electric box off the house, laying in the yard, and so they weren't coming to fix it last night. Right. So they're so that's one bus driver out, and then I think there was another one for something else. So, yeah, unfortunately, or you know, fortunately for. The you know us the the town our, the parents whose kids ride the bus that uh, we had a delay and then a closure because we still wouldn't have been able to get all the kids to school at least not on time. Yeah, it's tough. Like, and when you don't have the staffing you need, which everybody obviously struggling. Yeah, everybody's everybody. struggling for bus and, drivers. And the schools no different with the bus drivers or the teachers, teachers. or. With any of it, like everybody's short, like the whole world short staffed. Yeah, I don't know, which I still hadn't figured out. Like, are people? Well, my like, my good friend of mine's like, wow, you remember like one point five or two or whatever? I don't know, a million people died of COVID. I'm like, okay, but a lot of those are elderly people that weren't going to be driving buses or working in schools, um, or being police officers, right? Or working at McDonald's, or you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I agree, I do to some degree. However, that doesn't explain it. And I, the shortage apparently in the country is like 20 to 28 males aren't working. Like that's a stat. And I don't know why. Females, like yes. Fighting age men. Yeah, they're not working. Don't. And I wonder how are they supporting themselves? Are they on government benefits or programs? I don't know. I wonder if some of it is when they were locked down they were told that they're non-essential and so now they said oh i'm not essential then fine i'll be non-essential because even when i was in the military i didn't like that term yeah like if they're non-essential which i get right so like you'd have yeah but think about emergency (laughs) operation center set up so you bring in just the top people so that they can help make decisions and you know move whatever in a true in a true emergency sure and then, you know, you bring people back in. But, uh, like, just the terminology is degrading. Mm-hmm. But think about it, too. Like, your wife would be an essential worker because she's in the medical field. So I don't really know where I fit, like, in sewer drain. But, well, it's essential that I go to work and other people go to work <laughs> to provide for their family. Um, so there's no such thing as essential, non-essential. Like, right. Everybody... Who was working at the time when they were making these declarations? That's essential. Yeah. Yeah, because not. taking six months to send out six hundred dollars is garbage. While the government's openly saying last March, somewhere along the lines, we got to help pay the pensions of this other country. And hmm. seen the videos of that guy. Which one, man? Like hey, dancing in like heels and this. Like, oh yeah, where it's all a joke. Everything. I don't know. There's a lot of things that I feel personally, if like you guys were to look into it, our audience or whatever, that some of it is just intentionally meant to make you angry or disheartened, or disenfranchised. Like all those dancing nurses, like nothing seemed organic about that when the pandemic first kicked off. No, it's just... Like Nikki's worked on some floors where there's high camaraderie like when the the oncology floor in st louis because it's a sad hard place to work Mm -hmm. and i guarantee you as close as all of those nurses were because i'm like they would they would have to decompress because of and so we would have you know we'd host uh get-togethers for the all the ladies that she worked with i and this is when we were younger I have never imagined them dancing like that. Choreographed dance moves. You know what I mean? Like nothing. 
seemed organic. And the point that I'm getting at is, so you see that kind of stuff. You got people being labeled, whatever, and then you sit back and you think, like, do I want to go back? Because number of those who worked from home, right? The businesses usually didn't fail. Most of them, you know, I'm, I'm making generalizations. I could be wrong. Maybe most of them failed. But people who worked at home were still able to accomplish their mission, and they didn't have to interact with people, have water cooler talk, and you know all that non-essential stuff that goes on at work. You don't have the lights beaming down on you in a cubicle, sucking your soul out. So some of it could be like people also realize there's more to life than sitting in here taking abuse from people when I'm, ass, I'm, I've told I'm non-essential. I'm sitting in a fake lighted, you know, Ball. jail cell basically. Yeah. It's like it's basically like to me, it all comes down to uh, you need your TPS reports. You, you've seen that movie, right? Office space, mm. where they get tired, like three of them have a, well, one of them really has a breakdown, but like just tired of the day in, day out grind of the douchebaggery that goes on inside of an office park building with managers that come up and drone out. It was made like in the late 90s, but to me, it's almost like made for now in the sense of who wants to do that so i think that there's more to it than just people are getting benefits and everything else i think there's a psychological thing and i'm not a psychologist this is just my best guess i'd be interested to hear what everybody else's take on it is because we're just two guys that we see what we see yeah other people may know something different i mean it's just interesting to me that there is a shortage of workers and I don't think it's because a million and a half people died of COVID. Because you have a million and a half people dying from the flu before that. You know, not in one year, but yeah, it's not cumulative over a couple of years or whatever. But. Yeah, I mean, you also think about, too, we talked about this last week on the show, that number one cause of death in this country under 45 is fentanyl. Well, drug overdose. Or drug overdose. So how many... Of these people that would normally be working are hooked on drugs. Yeah, sitting at home trying to figure out how to get their next fix, but yeah. they can't work. Yeah. So you had that, you had COVID, you had, like you just said, like not being appreciated in your job and sick of the daily and, grind. And, and showing that you could do it. And then, that, then you know, like, not, not that I necessarily have anything against Elon making everybody come back to work, but. Right. You know, when you're told, come back to work, and it's like, but we just did 7% better than we have the previous three years, and none of us were at work. Like, to me, that that's that doesn't make sense from a production standpoint alone, because I know that that did happen at some businesses where they were still successful, if not gaining ground. And, and you know, also, it could be because they do business with the essential places that were open during the COVID policy shenanigans. You know, it's like the essential places where corporate... Corporate-owned that liquor stores. Congress, medical facilities that make, you know, pharmaceutical companies are making billions off of that. Um, liquor. Liquor stores. I mean, that's in New Hampshire because New Hampshire liquor stores are... Run no, no, state. I think across the country they didn't shut down liquor stores. Sounds surprising. They shut down bars and churches. Sure. Churches shut that down. People are arrested in Canada for going to church. See, if I, I... I have so much repenting that I do day in and day out. It's almost like you could start up a church. Like, not that I would. But my number one thing would be the government will never tell me to close the doors on you. You think? That would be, like, my number one thing. Like, I don't work at the behest of the government. I work to get you closer to God. I just, you know, and again, I don't go, I don't attend church because of these types of things because I know how bad I am as a person. So even whenever I sit here and say, oh, this is bad, like, I feel guilty because I know that I've done dumb things. You know what I mean? Like, it's just the nature of life. And people these days can't handle being told, like, you made a bad decision. It's okay. Take it back. Walk it back. You know, apologize. Be gracious. 
and move on. But that just doesn't happen. And I, I, I to get back, you know, part of that is forgiveness with the church, but um, I don't know. There's, it's unforgivable to to sell the government line as a church like you sell God's line. You know, the one thing that, and this happened last year. The separation of church and state. That never happened. Well, yeah. So last year, Dr. Scott was at the um, self-congregational church for the graduation. What do they call it baccalaureate? Mm-hmm. Is that baccalaureate? Yeah. And I remember I always liked him. I've known some about him. But he had said when he gave his speech, he's like, we got together as a community because he obviously goes to the Greek church. And he's like, yeah, we weren't closing our doors. Like, we didn't buy into this stuff. And I was like, automatically, like, boom, that dude just moved up the list, like, way up because he saw through the BS and was like, yeah, we're not doing that. Like, Well, even, like, even, like, without it being BS. So, like, let's say the next, you know, bad thing that happens has less than a 99 point whatever percent recovery rate for most people. So let's say it's lower at 90%. Right, so you still have ten percent of people who could die. You don't close the church. No, if you like, you leave the doors open. Now, some people may choose, like, hey, like I, yeah, I don't want to risk it or whatever. Right. And now, to be fair, there were some churches across America that tried to meet outdoors, and even in Canada, right, they were getting arrested, even if they were like doing it as a drive-in movie theater with a. Like Those people talking getting arrested their phone. on beaches, yeah. walking by themselves. And what is your oath when you take your oath? I swear to uphold the Constitution of the United States of America as a police officer and in the military. I mean, a lot of people as a politician, oath, politician. And you're like, hey, you can't be on this beach by yourself. I'm going to arrest you. Like, well, that's just a lack of critical thinking on those cops that they sent out on those missions. That's a lack of. Who the hell do you think you work for? You work for the, the citizens. people. Well, you work for the people. Exactly. That's what everybody forgets. Like they work, the whole government works at our behest. Yeah, I saw a good exchange, and maybe that's why you said it like that. Maybe you saw it, but uh, they were interviewing. I want to say the director of OPM, and it was uh, Representative Mace, and she was like, "Why are you even here? Like you're, you're not answering our questions. The you don't." Get to not tell the American people. Like, you're not answer, you're when you don't answer me and you try to, you know, give some long winded non answer, she said, You're not answering to the American people. You owe them an answer. And they should hold them in contempt. No, I, but yeah, I stopped. I watched three, or four, like, three or four clips of the OPM just because it's interesting because right. I did HR. But, and I'll just tell you this much I said it on a few episodes back. When these people come to Congress, there's a guy like Stephen Dubbs used to be that they say, hey, give me all the personnel data that you can think of. Any category that we track, I want a summary over the last however long. And then you you do it, and you do it within, like you can do it within hours so that if they're asked a question, they can say yes and then tab to it and answer whatever question personnel-wise. And so one of the basic questions that she couldn't answer was how many people were, or she didn't answer, uh, how many people worked from home before, during, and after COVID, how many people aren't showing up to work. And this, they wouldn't and answer that? Wouldn't answer it. Like, if, if we have an issue, just like what we're talking about, right, so it continues on to our conversation, of people not coming to work, and you know they work for the federal government, so they're not getting fired because they have that. On, that's a racket. Yeah, it takes a miracle to get someone fired if, if they're a civilian working for our government. Like for the federal government, you could do something so egregious that you should be fired, and maybe you'll end up being fired. But it's not like you're fired, right? They'll drag it out. They'll drag it out for years. Like that's. Just like we were talking about the other day, you're only here for two or three years, Morris. I can outlast you. You can't even fire me in two or three years. So when you leave, the paperwork's going to get handed off to someone else, and are they going to be that committed to removing me from service? It's all left up. Anyway, and it can be done, by the way. I did it, and then I got called names for doing it. Oh, well. (laughs) 
<laughs> so it, it can be done. It's long. It's arduous. It's tedious. But we would have we could we could have gotten some answers if she would have answered. Then that would feed into our conversation of like, oh well, the government, one of our largest employees in this country, said that this is what they're noticing, but they didn't give us any of that. Now the other thing is, is I did on one of the clips I watched, she was more knowledgeable about certain aspects so uh, it's obvious that some of the stuff she hands off hands off to deputies and other things that she's really hands-on because she answered it very well articulated it didn't over talk it didn't start off with well thank you for i'm so blessed to answer the like you know because they take up time by acknowledging the question back and say whatever just answer the question <laughs> you know i hate when they like oh thank you for that question like Shut the hell up and answer the question. Yeah, they're wasting 10 seconds. That's all that is, by the way. So uh, so we still don't have an answer for where all the workers are. But wow. to sum up that little segment, because that's kind of what it was. Like, I mean, all the way up to the o- director of OPM not a- being able to answer it to Congress. Yeah, I mean, I never really And there should be no secrets, just like you said. Like, you work for us. Answer it. Just like Representative May said, you work for us, answer the question. Like, stop it. Just answer it. And I guarantee you, she had so much data that she could have. That was an intentional non-answer, which keeps us in the dark so that we can say, well, how about we save some money and you fire those 8,000 people who haven't been to work in the last three weeks or three months or year and a half? No, we can't do that. They tried, by the way. I don't know. A lot of people don't know this, but they have tried to make it where you can fire civilian employees a lot easier. I, th- I want to say even, I can't remember if Obama's administration did. I know Bush's did, and I'm pretty sure Trump's did. Obama probably not, because he's the one that put all those retired generals and SES positions throughout the government that are you know, really controlling things allegedly behind the scenes. Senior Executive Service, if there's something you want to look up and study, I would recommend looking up that sham job. Not all of them, but uh, he greatly expanded the SES, which entrenches bureaucrats even more because they're like general-level, off, general officer-level positions. Not all of them are retired generals. but So next week, so I'm, I'm saying this now, so now we're committed, okay? So next week, I'm out, I don't know what day yet. It'll probably be after Monday, though, because this is a selectman's meeting. We're going to have a special show, and we're going to talk about the whole debacle with Stevens and the Newport Crime Syndicate. Well, maybe I shouldn't go that far. but uh, So there's just, like, a lot of things that – and some people know this. That was a joke. There's no crime syndicate. You're just saying that there are some questionable – no, there's some illegal shit going on, and it's well, yeah. Well, there's there's definitely and I'm going to prove bidding. It. The bidding was illegal. Like I don't that that to me yeah. straight up. So I had said to Jim because they've admitted that that they accepted the bid after noon. Yeah, like it's on tape. So I was telling Jim yesterday, Jim Burrows. I was like, hey, just so you know, like uh, <laughs> bear with it for a while because it's going to get rough. But I'll make your job easier to like hold people accountable because. I was like, I'm going to blow this, like, lid wide open. Like, I'm going to just rip the lid off this thing and blow it wide open. And so we're going to show the letter that was written. We're going to show the bridge. We're going to show a bunch of other things. And there's still stuff going on with Stevens currently, who I assume will probably be at the select board meeting on Monday because they gave him his exemption for the road for this pit song, which I believe is Coon Brook, but it's only for him. So, like, if you buy material from them, you're not allowed on the road. Now, Carol Concrete, like, I can go to Carol right now or United and get material, and I'm also exempt because the business is exempt, not just Carol's truck, United's truck. So apparently they didn't give him one of those. And uh, just more crap going on in this town against Stevens construction and which makes like uh, you know it makes no sense to me no it's ridiculous and the no family since the four and a half years I've lived here 
I've only heard good things about the things that they do for the town. So yeah. I might be wrong as we dig into it, obviously, but my initial and current take is that we watched the meeting. They hadn't done anything wrong. No. So we're going to get into that, and I'm going to, well, we're going to force the board to actually hold someone accountable. Um, and how are we going to do that? Well, we're going to let everyone know that pays taxes in this town that this is what's happening. And if you think it's okay that uh, One of your local certain businesses are is... discriminated against and targeted. Yeah, I feel like there's then, some targeting going on. Mm, I talked to another employee or an ex-employee yesterday who said, yeah, as soon as I spoke out against the town and suddenly this fence I had was an issue or something. And I'm like, mm. oh, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, you surprising. Know. Mm. Yeah, I'm waiting for something to happen at the end of my road. Or so we will get into that next week, uh, and we'll bring what we need to bring. And which is, I mean, this stuff is all presented as. as I mean, you can go and board. watch all the select board meetings. I mean, I don't know the dates of them. But yeah, we'll, remember, but we'll find. We'll make out. sure we put it up there so you can not only listen to our analysis, but then you can go and listen for yourself because that's really. What matters is what you, how you interpret things. You might see things differently through a different lens. But we know you won't. No, yeah, I mean, you never know. Uh, Friday, this Friday, 6 o'clock, third annual. I try not to be so absolute, Tom. Have you figured that out about me yet? Because I don't think nah, that. I don't bullshit. There's not, well, there's not it. very many absolutes in this world. I just tell it how it is. I don't. I don't sugarcoat it. I don't <laughs> leave myself an opening to back back out of a situation. Oh, oh is that what I'm doing? I full on jump in and. <laughs> well, you should always leave yourself a, a back entrance because. But I'm like that bull in a china closet, and you're kind of like, well, let's be a little more. And I'm like, no, screw this. I'm the time for. <laughs> I'm the guy that's like, let's put down stripes for the bull, so maybe he'll follow the arrows like the yeah. the sheep and cattle that it is. <laughs> yeah, I'm the guy that runs in. The bull goes through, misses everything. I just. Tear it all down as you go through. Yeah. <laughs> you, you break the three things that you actually didn't want to break while you're doing it. No. You know, my na- nickname used to be Burning Bridges Morris. Well, we are there's talking a, about bridges. But there's a reason for that is because I try, as flawed as I am, and I have many flaws, but I try to, like, once you violate certain things, like, I don't really care that I have torch that bridge and you can't get over it and neither can i stay on the other side yeah you know what i mean like they would call me like oh burning bridges more like, well, it's not really an insult like i am no I, i'm about what's so right. I just, i'm making sure that because you make you, right you describe yeah but you describe me as like the the softy is what you're getting at but i i am slow to develop so that when I'm right, there's no, there's no room left to for you to convince me that I'm not. It's just a, I'm like a slower process. Whereas like you'll go in there and you'll break some stuff, and and you'll be like, yeah, I shouldn't have broken that. However, the eight other things that I broke deserve to be broken, right? So I try not to break the the three extra items. That's I think that that would be more of a. And then once I realize those eight things, and then I make sure I lock up the front of the shop and no one ever gets back in. So I, I just like to be, so when I'm right, about, like if I think I'm right about something, because a lot of times you'll hear me say, I think so, and because a lot of it's good for you to look up on your own because we all have our biases. Well, I'm going to like this story. But this one, this, this story, with a, watching it, because I wasn't there for that. I wasn't watching for that, for the Stevens, you know what I mean? And so then when you see it and you hear it, you're like, wait a second, this is going on? I watched them all, and I watched all the proof be presented, and I was told by a select board member, it sucks, we can't tell you, but stuff's happening behind the scenes. Like, it's not just being, like, washing our hands of it. Well, if you commit fraud and bid rigging, Somebody should lose their job for that. And if you legally post a bridge, which you have no authorization to do, and lie, saying the bridge is not safe when it has actually the highest rating a used bridge can, or a non-new non bridge can have, 
Uh, that's fraud. That's so many things. And people should be fired for that because I know if we had a teacher writing a bunch of crap that wasn't true, and I'm pretty sure we'd go to Don and be like, uh, this employee is not representing us as they should. They're committing fraud, which is illegal. And no, nobody loses their job, though. So what would you do behind doors? Talk to them sternly? Yeah, they did a Lindsey Graham. Hey, don't you ever commit fraud again here. Make sure the power. Yeah, I think the work. power just yeah, must have kicked back on. So I don't know. Is We're it good. Still recording. It's all still on. So, um, so anyway, so I, we're just going to show the facts that were showed at that meeting because a lot of people didn't watch it and don't know anything about it. Well, I'm going to well, you make can just point. Like put the clip on there and let everybody see it for themselves. Yeah. So uh, I, I'm not. Uh, yeah, just it's not okay. This is my town in the sense that this is a town I grew up in. This is a town I've invested my time and commitment to this town, whether it's a school board, zoning board, whether it's Your having business. a business here, <laughs> raising my family here, having property here. Um, I- I'm not just going to be like, oh, yeah, whatever. It's all cool. Tell what, the next person steps out of line and gets slammed down? Yeah, I don't think so. Yeah, it's all fun and games until it's you. Yeah, well. That's getting targeted. Correct. Uh, saw this story on the way just before I came here. Uh, Bradford man arrested in possession of 68 pounds of marijuana. Uh, wow. Yeah. So here's the thing. This this dude's an idiot, okay? Resident's name is Eric Picard. Was arrested in Webster over the weekend and charged with possession of 68 pounds marijuana, a felony, obviously, an illegal firearm. So the reason he was stopped is um, Webster police said they stopped Eric for speeding near the intersection of Battle Street and 127, and then they obtained a warrant probably because they could smell the marijuana, and then boom. So you're in possession of enough drugs to put you in jail for a very, very long time. And you're speeding? Like, this is how most of these people get taken down. Light out, speeding, didn't use a directional. Like, you're an idiot. No, Dar won a word for him. He should have been at 10 and 2 and going one mile under. <laughs> I'm trying to think so. Or is it 9 and 3 now? Whatever the proper positioning of the hands on the steering wheel is. I always say 10 and 2, and Zeta corrected me, so it must have changed. So, just a rough estimate from things I've seen in the past, that was probably roughly $150,000 worth of marijuana. Wow. And if he didn't actually own those 68 pounds, say he was running it for someone, that dude's got more to worry about than jail. Because if you just lost, like, a cartel or some big drug dealer, you just lost that much money of his, I wouldn't want to be you, dude moron yeah that's an unhealthy career choice i would recommend that no one run drugs ever (laughs) nothing good can come from it now and when you have 68 pounds go on a stay go on a staycation to mass for three days and get your enjoyment there stay out of trouble right you know what i mean like there's so many different things that you can do it's crazy or Vermont. I think it's legal in Vermont. It's legal, it's, it's legal in every state but New Hampshire, all the way around us, uh, which, you know, whatever. I'm not going to debate any of that because I, I don't care. But this dude obviously was <laughs> selling it. Uh, oh, 68 pounds. That's a lot. I mean, you see people all the time, you know, busted with a pound or two or five or something. I don't know. But 68. Yeah. I, I would. Can you imagine what that thing smelled like? I can't. I only thing I can imagine is is he's just an idiot. What he should have done as soon as he got pulled over, should have got out and lit that truck on fire. <laughs> Southern New Hampshire would still be high right now, <laughs> and all the proof would be gone. <laughs> and yeah, all right, you're gonna do a little bit of time for burning your truck, and they'll get you for something. But you wouldn't be doing probably like 15 years or something. Crazy. Uh well, what's crazy is it's legal in every state around us. So, anyway, whatever. 
But in none of those states are you allowed to have 68 pounds. No, like... I mean, I don't even care about the gun. Like, I don't know if he's a, like, an illegal gun. I don't understand. I don't... Yeah. It, it, didn't, it didn't say, and that wasn't the point of the story. It was just about... It was probably illegal because he had a class one substance or whatever. Yeah, probably because it was with it, yeah. yeah. Or he just had an unregistered yeah. weapon that he got from his buddy that he was transporting well, for. Maybe he's a felon already, I don't uh, know. Yeah. We're just now... We're just pontificating. Yes. We're just BSing. The only part of the story is he got... He's speeding through an intersection, got pulled over, <laughs> had 68 pounds of weed. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. the fact. Let it be a lesson to you. Don't speed. In the and don't transport from drugs. From Concord Monitor. So, uh, so the, we were talking about the Silicon Valley bank thing and, you know, how they're going to bail them out now, which we all I watched the bullshit. Uh, I don't know. It might have been a Tucker Carlson clip. You know, to tell on myself for watching you know regular news or whatever, but he had some interesting takes on that. Yeah. Well, they said that most of the people that invest in this bank are basically Democrat donors, and this is just a payback of hey, but, thanks for all the things you've done for us. And the- they spent seventy million on on giving away the BLM charities. Hmm. Seventy million. Yeah. How many of those people went to jail for fraud? A few. Uh, a couple of them. I mean, they were Not just, them. the ones at the top were just spending the money on themselves. Yeah. The whole thing was a fraud. Everything's, like, I don't give to charities anymore for the most part. No, because they're all of, frauds. Like, outside of, like, helping out, you know what I mean? Like, we donated our money to the school when we right. did that directly. You have to look up the charity if you're going to donate because even, like, the Red Cross... The per- uh, I would never give Red Cross. Nope. That's my own the, personal opinion. The percentage but. of money that actually goes to someone is so small, yet they, they CEOs make huge money. To they, me, they outed themselves at 9-11 because they didn't give all – because they got a lot of money, a lot of money from regular Americans that felt bad, middle class, poor people who don't have a pot to – Mm-hmm. PN, but yet they're you know they're trying to do what they thought was right, and then they went and turned it into don't be mad at uh, you know certain ethnicities and religions and everything else. And it's like why are you spending money on that? Who cares? Like take care of those families, make those families whole as best you can to replace that income that was lost from their loved ones. That's my own take. So I I stop even taking them seriously after seeing how they spent the money because then they had the hurricane there after after that and heck even joel olstein wouldn't let the real refugee type situation into his church they ain't fucking real pat they no i know he's a shit bag too he'll burn in hell he doesn't i don't even know if he believes in that because he's all like a new age guru type stuff it's he's a fraud in my opinion, like again, I can be judged, and I'm, you know, whatever. I'm not perfect, but I do know that if I were running a church and someone was helpless, needy, homeless, you know, their lives disrupted, I would welcome them in. Listen, I like. It seems like that would be a whole part of the whole New Testament calling of loving your brother and taking care of each other. That's one of the themes I picked up on. There's others, but. There was a a pastor like I used to like as a kid. Like I used to watch him like with my grandmother. And he was like funny, like super funny. Like love this guy. Like he was great. And a couple of years ago, come out like uh, people aren't donating enough money, and that's why like Christ doesn't come back. Whatever. And I'm like, yep, <laughs> you're a shitbag. I'll <laughs> never listen to you again ever. Like, who the freaking hell are you? That stuff pisses me off. But uh, anyways, yeah. So Gavin Newsom was all like. Yeah, you got to bail out this bank and everything, and then didn't disclose that he had money involved in it, which is illegal. So basically, him getting money out of it, like, and it's. So I've watched, and I, I talked about it before. So this bank totally bought into the diversity, equity, and inclusion policies, where they were hiring on characteristics. And not on your capabilities, right? Which is why they failed. So, like, even, and that's what Tucker showed was this commercial, and it might have, this might have been for Signature Bank, because Signature Bank also failed, but it was, it's the same line of 
But uh, they didn't fail. The no. government's going to go in and be like, here's all the taxpayers' money. You made bad decisions. Sucks to be you. Oh, Tim and Steve, you made bad decisions and you can't pay your bills? Tough shit. Get another job or we'll put you in jail. <laughs> Get out of your house. Mm-hmm. Live on the street. We'll take your profit, even though you only owe us X amount of dollars. We're going to take it all because yeah. we had to ask you for it. And then when that family member dies and leaves that house to you, oh, we're going to tax the shit out of you too, even though they pay taxes their whole life on it. They pay taxes on the income that paid for the mortgage and everything else. We're going to take that. But if you're a big bank in Silicon Valley, we're going to bail you out. If you're the airlines, we'll bail you out. If you're the car dealerships or manufacturers, we'll bail you out. We will bail out. They should let it all fail. Like, who cares? Me and you. Who cares if it, like they deserve to fail based yeah. on their bad policies? But what I had seen, and I think I've mentioned it before on the show, is they don't really care because just exactly what happened to them was going to happen, right? So they're going to get bailout money. They're not going to change anything. <laughs> And, you know, they might change a little bit, but now the government owns part of that bank, Mm -hmm. and they'll continue on with it. Like, they know that they're going, like, they have to know that these programs, when you're hiring not the best candidate, but you're hiring the best characteristics on your woke scale of character victimhood, like, you will fail. Yeah. Yeah. It just, it's, It's it's happened for seven years now. And it's a joke. We're th- I don't know. I see different numbers all the time. But we're somewhere between 31 and $34 trillion in debt. And, yeah, we're going to bail them out. We're going to give Ukraine more money. And we're going to do this. And we're going to do this. And we're going to do this. And, oh, you need help? I saw another, now. another interview with a guy. I don't know if he's in the administration or works with the Fed or where. But, anyway, his point was. Uh, they have a limitless amount of money that they can print at the Fed. So, like, if you listen and you know what that means, that they if they just print up more money, that means that your one dollar is now worth yes. they ten will cents. Destroy your if, life. If it was worth fifteen no cents before they printed that money, it's worth ten cents now. So, mm-hmm. everything that cost a, a dollar is now you can't pay your bills. You more. Huh. It's too bad you can't pay your bills. I mean. Well, you don't have a printing machine in your basement? Oh, that sucks. And How is it? It can only go on for so long. A lot of How countries that? are trying to leave the petrodollar. Like, if you're on the petrodollar, all, what we do then is when we print more money, then we have to go call in more debts that everybody has around the world in U.S. dollars that they have to pay back in U.S. dollars, which then makes life harder for them in their country because... Now they're getting called on these debts. I mean, it's just a bad, it's a Ponzi scheme all the way around. Basically, I don't know. I I'm, I don't know enough about banking in the technical sense. I just know that I don't like my tax dollars being given away to people who obviously have a failing business plan. Like, who is the bank loan officer that's like, oh, so you have... Uh, uh, you know, I mean, even their bank board. Have you looked up the members of their bank board? There's like an improv troop person. There's only one banker on their bank board. It's just another fucking money laundering scheme, just like Ukraine. But what are they doing with all this money? What What are they building? Where are they going? What are they going to do with it? I don't know. Buy their way out of trouble? I mean, people pay don't... people off? Maybe. I mean, it's just another distraction, anyways, because, you know. Yeah, everything's a distraction. Epstein's list should be coming uh, out. Epstein's but. list mm-hmm. should have been out years ago. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, someone allegedly bombed the Nord Stream pipeline that one reporter has linked back to our own government. Did you see that apparently Russia just took down one of our drones over the Black Sea? I did see that. Yeah. What are we going to do about it? Give money more money to Ukraine, probably. I also saw something, and I don't know, it could have been made up, but it's worth looking into. Is those balloons are like a part of a mesh system so they can track all of our cars from like five years ago? There's a video showing, oh, we just got approval, and it looks just like the balloons that were shot down, allegedly, but it's to track cars. Social credit type. I mean, this is some dystopian type stuff. Like, you can easily label me a conspiracy theorist, but it's out there if you look at it. It's freaking happening. I know. It's Welcome happening. Welcome to America last. 
Do you like living in America last? Is it great for you? And I, you know, I'm kind of getting pissed off now, but I would have loved to have walked around yesterday to some people I know that are on the other side of the aisle, if you want to call it that. Uh, how do you like living in America last? Oh, it's not so bad. Really? We're doing our part to, what go, world do you live to in? go green. Oh, yeah. You can't go green. Open your my eyes and ears up and see that the electrical grid can't support everybody driving an electric car. And, you know, I think Elon said you could take however many square miles out in the middle of the desert and you can put up solar arrays that would power the whole country. But until that time, solar is not unreliable. If you care so much about the environment, why would you cover miles and miles and miles and miles of the earth in solar panels destroying the natural look of the terrain? Yeah, because it, you don't give a shit about the environment. You don't, because then you wouldn't want to use the batteries as they're made right yeah. now, because they're little slaves that yeah. climb into little black slaves. Fact, climbing into mines, taking out your cobalt, your lithium, and all your other stuff that's in the battery, so that you can have this little iPhone and you can drive your little Tesla and all this stuff. Um, but. I'm the racist because I disagree with a policy about something, yet you get your batteries from black slaves. Yeah, that's horrible. Fact. People don't realize that. So you can point your finger at me. I mean, we're all whatever. part of the problem on a global scale because of our lifestyles. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Even us with our phones, we're hey, this, supporting them. This fucker's old. That's a 10. <laughs> they're at like 14 now and they're like 1700 dollars why you're not playing you're not you don't even, the you don't even that, own it anymore now no. you don't own the phone Rent it's, it. you're renting it it's all a scam just like you know it's hard to read all those service agreements when you do something you know but like the last one on the update of, you know i still play on like friday nights with guys i grew up with it's like our catharsis 10 o'clock on friday nights but anyway um a thing came up and it said uh just so you're aware we do have the right to listen in on your conversations and ban you from the platform if we don't like what you're saying and if you don't accept it and you don't accept it don't work. yeah you can't use it the, and you're not getting your money back no you're not just like everything everything we do on the computer i had to like click so like we're on spotify now We'll see how that works out because when you Google, like, not when I Google, when I try to find it, I don't find it. But so, you know, there's a list of things you like. We need to put that in the description, like the yeah. Rumble address, the YouTube. Well, the YouTube. these are the you know descriptions of the rules and whatever. And you have to obviously accept because if you don't, they'll not be on a flat platform. But like the list is ridiculous, and so I'm like, uh, like COVID was one of them. It's like, oh, let's not talk about COVID because you know that'll get us kicked off. Not that I give a crap. I don't anymore. know how that is because Joe Rogan's the face of Spotify, and he talks about any and everything. Number one show in the country. Yeah. Drop him, lose millions. That's true. It's yeah. all about money. He's probably – well, yeah, because if you watch him, he he goes up right to the edge, and then he backtracks a little bit. It's all about Not on everything, but no. I don't really – watch him every once in a while if he has a good guest on there i'll watch he's, or two. he's okay but he really is the dumb stoner yeah but i like how he asks questions of his guests he doesn't let them just say something and get away with it like to me like all things aside that's the best part is the way that he's like well no explain that to me especially if he knows a, even an inkling about the topic because that's how you get everybody to tell on themselves that they're really just repeating what they heard from their boss or the mainstream media or whatever. Like, yeah, and he'll ask questions that we're thinking, and he'll talk, he'll ask it. Why didn't you yeah, do so that, uh, he, he, he's a good interviewer. He might be a stoner, but he's a good interviewer. I just I'm not to have a problem with stoners. I don't. No, I, I just the yeah, I, I get the point that you were making. But I, I still and the only reason I kind of say it is like we watched Fear Factor over the weekend on. Um, I don't know, Hulu or something. It was like episode one. It's so weird because he has hair then and he just... Smaller. Yeah, it's just, it's so different. Like, he's kind of more like nerdy almost and it's just crazy, which I get it. Like, if that's your first big thing and now you've been doing it for 20 years, you get better. Just like our first show, it's probably pretty... 
crappy. The show's Hundreds. marginally better. Hundredth show, yeah. Uh, so just I have a few different like quick story things, not like long, but so New York Attorney General uh, Latita. Letitia. Letitia, I'm sorry. James? Yeah. How do I know her name? Well, I should have read a little further and known that was her first name, then I would have known Letitia. Not, yeah. Anyways, Letitia James says her office is proud to host Drag Story Hour Readathon. And my question is if I could ask her, are you proud of all the crime? Because you're not doing anything about that, which is your job. But the murder rates and everything in New York City and New well, York. Well, they're focused on the wrong things. Like, it's just a distraction. Distraction ploy. Most people would agree that no one, male or female, needs to be this is gyrating I, and twisting and turning in front of children. It's this just, is what I don't understand. I mean, it was like that for years. If you if you would have even said in polite company, like, ah, I think I'm going to take a little Jimmy here to the strip club, whatever. The people would call the cops on you, or see, and the strip club hopefully wouldn't let you in. No, I, you, I would, you got to be like eighteen or twenty-one, don't you? Uh, I think it's eighteen. I don't know. I just listen. This is how. Okay, at, at, again, there have been drag queens since I can remember. Forever. There was a movie that uh, old uh, Wesley Snipes and. Tu Wong Fu, something, Love You, Julie Newmar, or something. It came out in the late 90s, early aughts. But it had Patrick Swayze, Wesley Snipes, and then uh, John Leguizamo, I think. And they end up, I, I, I think the premise is that they're drag queens or they're trying to get to a show. I've never seen the movie. But I remember when it came out because I was like, that's creepy because they look creepy. Like Joanna Man, <coughs> that's... Isn't that another one where they, like, gender bend or something? It's a bunch of weird... I don't it's just weird stuff, it. right? But, I mean, so I, what my point is it's been around for a while. So when Tu Wong Fu, Love You, Julie Newmar came out, people weren't trying to shut down the movie because it wasn't made for kids. Right. It was entertainment about, for adults. It's about age-appropriate stuff. Like, for instance, if my wife has a... Adult toy party, Christy Shed, Athena's. She's awesome. If you know, you're interested, I can hook you right up. But, anyways, obviously, I have kids. My kids can't even be in the house. It can't be like, oh, keep your kids upstairs in your bedroom. No, those kids cannot be in the house because it's illegal because of the adult. The theme. Yes. Just like if when we were down getting Olivia's belly button pierced and then they had like an adult shop or whatever off of this and i'm like bored i walk around and i walk in and look around like i want to like make sure adelina didn't like because it's illegal and they would get in trouble but suddenly it's okay for a drag queen so men dressed up as females to rub their crap all in your whatever and dance in front of your children that's not okay dance provocatively provocatively yeah no. right what the and, fucking hell? And, you know, there are clips, and I'm sure they're not all, whatever, right? But I'm generalizing. There are clips where they're not saying appropriate things either to no. kids. No. Or they're dancing on a pole. and they're like. And so it's it, just a, it's a distraction because everybody knows. I guarantee you the percentage of people that are like, oh, I want to take little Jill, little Jill, whatever, to a drag queen show. There's, there can't be very many of those people out there. Obviously, there are some because they show up. But my point is, I would I would think that most people would agree with me and you on this, that there hasn't been such a social shift and a enlightenment that kids all of a sudden can do certain things before certain ages, but we're going to hold off on buying matches, buying alcohol, tobacco. Get tattoos. And so, until they're you know, 21, they can go kill somebody when they're 18 on behalf of the country. But they can't go buy their own weapon, certain weapons, right, until you're 21? Hang on, 21. Uh, <laughs> Makes no sense. It's just a backwards clown world, Tim. And, like, anybody, like, I don't really know anybody, but I could think, like, if I knew someone that was like, yeah, I want to take my kids to a, like, a drag comedy show, it would be a clean one, right? It would just be, like, some guy dressed up in drag 
Do yeah, I mean? well, there's there's a difference between like they're just it's trying. Huge. It's huge. They're just trying to normalize. Yeah. The sexual, to me, my personal opinion, they're trying to normalize the sexual. Uh, the like, sexual you know, pedophilia, case. like it's just it's all about to me. It's yeah. The, in California, how they passed that law. Yeah, because they're coming after your kids. Like literally. Yeah. It's. And if you don't think it's true, look it up. It's real. You have all these people out there trying to... And you know why I'd want to do that, Steve? Because if we can change the culture, if we can shift it all and make it legal for adults to diddle little kids, all people on Epstein's list, it won't matter. Because it's normal, right? Oh, hmm. There you go. See, now you're starting to connect some dots there, Timmy. You know, when you're talking to the most powerful people in the country or world... Allegedly. Allegedly on that list. Hmm. Makes you wonder. Bill Gates, 36 times. Yeah. Supposedly someone on Twitter yesterday said that stuff's coming out today about Bill Gates. It'll destroy him. And he's like, and if I disappear, it's still getting released. Because I saw that. I, I tried to look up and see who that guy was. Cause Mark I, something. Yeah. I, I can't stand the hyperbole. Oh, my Tune God. Tune in tomorrow. I'm going to release it. Well, I'll just release it right now. And you know what? DC Drano, you know what he did? He's suing Twitter. Yeah. Ooh, whip the shit. A... You're on Twitter still. I know. I'm going to sue you. I'm still using your platform, but I'm going to sue you. First of all, the people that violated your rights was before Musk even owned it, so he's probably not even legally responsible. I don't know, but yeah. I know. I, that was his big thing. Was that he was, right. I was like, that's your big drop. Yeah, how about I just watch? I have like, no faith in the court system. We've talked about this on the show a few times. That No, not when they're politicians being appointed. Like, you're, you're supposed to, you're a judge. Like, I mean, could you imagine if Gar, Merrick Garland would have gotten on the Supreme oh Court? Oh, God. Like, we, we put these people up on pedestals because of the way that we're taught as children about the, to be reverent of the Supreme Court, the presidency, and everything else. And all I've seen for the last 20-some-odd years is a clown show. Ever since 9-11, like, the clown show has been on full display for me. Like, I just... But remember it's a clown this, show. Remember in this country where I already said, like, I know when I was a kid, like, you can be anything you want when you grow up, right? Yeah. Well, this is the American dream. Apparently that all went to hell because now it's, oh, you can be a woman and you're a man. You can be a woman. You're a woman. You want to be a man? You can do that. Uh, that's just... What the hell is wrong with you? Well, I, again... You said it. Once you're 18, yeah. Once you're 18, honestly, who cares? That's don't affect it. my life. And that was one Go of ahead. the other questions that, Na that Representative Mace had asked the OPM director was about how many surgeries have we paid for for gender reassignment? Or I bet you got an answer on that one. She didn't answer it. No, there's another little quote. I just I'm skipping over. And little. I guarantee you, she knows that answer. It's guaranteed. So uh, probably on the top of her head. This fits exactly what we're talking about. Someone mentioned this before this other story. So Biden calls barring, uh, barring kids' access to puberty blockers, transgender surgeries, cruel and close to sinful. Why? Because you're a sick fuck that wants to molest little there, kids? There were... You sniff them. Ten years ago. Like, <laughs> like, none of this even would have... Sinful? What? If you worship, what, Satan? It might, you know, be sinful not to be able to... Sinful? To mutilate a child? I just, to me, kids are precious. They shouldn't be hurt. They should be nurtured. They should be taught and see, to we're not think talking. for themselves. They should not even come into the conversation, the unfortunate conversation that we're having, because this is just sick and disgusting. And we're not talking a girl that like likes to wear boys' clothes or yeah, whatever. Yeah, no, no, that's not, no, no. They're talking permanent stuff, puberty blockers and all this. And then the suicide rate in the LGBTQ plus community is, is high, right? And you uh, want to just give in and let these kids do whatever. What do you think is going to be the suicide rate when five years from now they realize, oh, my God, I made a horrible mistake that cannot be changed? But you don't give a shit because you want to just, well, the kid wants to do it, so they should be able to do it. Well, if the kid wants to burn your house down, it's probably not a good idea. If they want to uh, 
go out in the woods and just randomly shoot animals, that's probably not a good idea. If they want to drive their car, you know, and they're five years old, then yeah, sure, you can take my car down the street. Because that's what my kid wants. No, your responsibility as a parent to get your kid to make good decisions. And it's not easy. But when you're like, yeah, I'm going to put you on puberty blockers because you're five years old and you, you like to play with Barbies even though you're a boy. So you probably should have been a girl. Which is no. interesting because ten years ago, yep, you couldn't say that Barbies are only for girls. Yes. And now it's... No, if they play with a Barbie, uh, you need to look at some gender-affirming right. care. Well, you see, it doesn't happen everywhere. No, it's just in some of the like where the society has been infected, and they've been able to make their way into because people listen to these, these positions of authority where they can make yeah. these decisions. They gave them a platform like right down in Boston, allegedly at the Children's Hospital. Mm-hmm. Yep. Once Tennessee found out, man, they nipped that in the bud. They passed right. laws and all oh, kinds of stuff. People all pissed about that, though. I can't bring my kids to a drag show. Like, what the hell? Why not? You couldn't bring your kids to a strip club. Yeah. You were fine with that. Male or female couldn't do it. Shouldn't do it. I remember when the movie Strip Tease came out, and there was, you know, because I think that. She might, uh, you know, this was 28 years, 30 years ago now almost, well, however long ago it was. But I think there's, like, scenes where she has her kid at the strip club with her. And so there was, like, pushback from society of, like, you are you wouldn't do that. Like, that's horrible. But have, you know, yeah, huh? nor- trying to normalize having a kid around that environment. I mean, this was, again, a long time ago when that movie came out, like 1996 or 5. It's a long time ago. Almost 30 years. And I get it. Things change. Yeah, things change, but not... 100%. Not the... Not like this. No. Not this rate. Like, I watched this... I mean, my my granny had to work in the field when she was, like, five years old picking cotton so that her family could eat. There was no, uh, well, how are you feeling today, Edna? You feeling like... You, you know what I mean? It was like, wake up, we got to go earn money. There was no... There wasn't time to make up all this kind of BS. But what? my point being, then we realized that kids shouldn't be working at that young of an age, right? They passed laws even back in the factories. And recently, I'm pretty sure they caught people utilizing underage kids, illegals, for manufacturing in this country, like within the last month. And a matter of fact, I can probably find it on being while you Walmart. give your two cents. Walmart's been caught many times. I have a question. So you're telling me you had a grandmother that picked cotton, and she's white? Mm-hmm. So I, th- I thought just black people would pick cotton. Uh, no, that's all just... I mean, they did. Like, not all. Of course. I mean, there were also black slave owners. There were black landowners. Up until a point, right? I'm not justifying everything. No, I'm not going to justify right? everything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> but we had this it, conversation it, yesterday. I'm like... Oh, wait, so are you saying that, you know, like, for instance, indentured servants that were Irish built in New York City, um, that was pretty close to slavery. Um, The pyramids were built in Egypt by slaves, allegedly, and they weren't black. They ever been brown slaves, I guess, if you're Egyptian or whatever. But the point is, people in general have been slaves for ever. I mean, this is in the New York Times, so... What you got here? Uh, Biden admin plans crack down on migrant child labor. Um, so they did like an expose showing. And do you remember that that undercover clip of that caseworker in Texas? It was about the time of the Alex Jones trial. Yeah. And she was telling her to go get a job as a prostitute. Yes, 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 yes. I do remember yeah, that. Yeah, see, you can't forget it. Like they, I do. They throw so much stuff at you that you forget right. these kind of things. Well, anyway, the New York Times did an investigation. I don't know. This was published on February 27th of this year, written by Hannah Dreyer. But basically, there's a wide crackdown um, because of their published investigation that um, the kids are being put to work and they're also dying. Of course, this is the second. See, I'm not going to click on this. I'm going to run out of free articles. 
Don't you love that? So I clicked on another one. There it is. Oh, come on. And to clarify the whole slave See, thing. They, they blocked it from me. Yeah, dog it. I clicked on the wrong article, but it is another article. I was trying to see if it tell you how many actually allegedly were. So, to to clarify why I mentioned that whole slave thing, because I've been called racist by people before, which I find hilarious, um, is just to prove that everybody in every walk of life, nationality, color, everything has been a slave at some point in the last 20,000 years or whatever you want to say. So... I wasn't really listening to your yeah. explanation. What did were you were you asking me a question or is that a facetious? No, I was just saying that I've I've known people that said that I'm racist because of comments I make, which is the most absurd thing ever. But I well, I mean, there's a whole conversation to be had about that, right? Because when right. guys like me and you start talking about that, inevitably we're going to say something that someone's going to judge us for, and it's like, well, how can we have an open conversation? If I'm wrong. Why are you judging me? Why not say, hey, you didn't see this side of the argument? Because like, the point is to shut you up. I know. So they well, that's why, that's why I always tell you, like, don't be so definitive, you know. Like, you know, you're a moron if you believe this because that's not going to wake anybody's curiosity senses. They're, all they're going to do is like, well, because you're at being absolutist, right? Like, Sure. Which there are certain things, like Sometimes we already said like earlier, to people off though. That they, there are absolutely anyway. Some of the major brands and retailers that they found underage, uh, they call them child migrants, but illegal aliens working. Ben and Jerry's, Fruit of the Loom, Ford, General Motors, J. Crew, Walmart, Whole Foods, and Target. In Grand Rapids, Michigan, children work late nights at plants operated by Hertzside Food Solutions which makes and packages food for other companies, including General Mills, Frito-Lay, and Quaker Oats. So, Walmart's been caught so many times. It's crazy. How the hell do you get a job at Ford Motor Company or Chevy and, like... Not be 18 years old and right. have a work visa of some kind? Like, yeah, I'm stamping out parts today and, like... Uh, imagine... You hired six illegal aliens to work for you. You would be your business would be over with. Like you know, if you get reported and they found that you hired them knowingly, right? Like if they, if they didn't have like fake papers to give you, and you're like, and you couldn't say like, wait a second, I have all this paperwork. I did my due diligence. Because are they doing their due diligence? Let's take it further. And I'd be called a racist because I had. Six Mexican workers working for me, the white guy, hey, with well, his business. Let's walk that back because on the last eight shows, you said it's not just Mexicans walking across the border. They're coming in from... Yeah, most of them aren't even Mexicans. Yeah, I know. That's why I said I mean, yeah. it was kind of being a, a joke because right. that was the example that you used. It was a callback. It's true. <laughs> you don't like it when I call back like that. No, it's actually really true because everyone thinks, like, it's Mexico invaded our country. No, it's not. It's freaking all these other countries. It's, what was it the other day? A story. 170 countries. I saw a good clip of a president. Was it El Salvador? Did you see that? No. He was like, now all of a sudden, Western states are trying to get involved with his country. Is that the one where they allowed them to just like run over gang members and like take El them down? Salvador, I think, is where they arrested like. An insane amount of gang members. Right. And they're like, they're trying to judge they're like, him. Done. He's like, yes, yes, it, yes. But yes. his question was, where were you when they were killing our innocent children? They don't care. Like now all of a sudden, like you're protect, you're, you're mad at me for cleaning up the streets. But why weren't you mad when these gang bangers were killing innocent men, women, and children? So anyway, it was a good, uh, uh little speech. I, I, granted, I don't speak fluent Spanish. So, I had the subtitles on, and I'm assuming the subtitles are correct. It's an assumption that you have to make these days because it could have been totally, you know, it could be made up, whatever they're typing, if you don't speak that language. But anyway, <laughs> it was. It, I, I liked it because he was like, where were you? Like, get it, stop talking about me and my country. Like, life is good here. Stay out of my affairs because you weren't here when they were killing us. Right. You didn't care then. Yeah. 
Anyway, it was a good speech just to tie in everything back to last story. And this kind of ties in everything again, too. So Americans are to blame for fentanyl smuggling. Xenophobia stops border reform, says Florida Democrat. I don't know how this one's from Florida. Debbie Washman Schultz. She's garbage. Wasn't she yes. caught? But like whatever you're gonna say, with the, the DNC allegedly, plan. yes, yeah. But she's okay. It's all good. Uh, predominantly blame Republicans and Americans uh, in general for the problems of the U.S. Mexican border. Recently, saying that Americans are responsible for the rise in fentanyl coming across the border. In an interview with MSNBC, the Democrat also blames xenophobia on the on part of Republicans for str- uh, stifling border patrol policies. Your president, you dumb. Is in charge for two years now, more than two years now, because his term's a little over half over. Um, we've had the most people cross the border in the history of the United States. Seven million, roughly, have crossed the border. I mean, just the audacity for them to straight up lie like that. I'm telling you, it goes back to the NDAA in 2013, the Smith month. They changed it to where we can be propagandized. This, mm-hmm. So, like, what you see on the news now is what we go in, the State Department goes into other country and does. Yeah. Convince them all kinds of craziness yeah. through beautifully produced videos and they try to make it sound good. Just like we were talking about the the digital IDs in Australia. Like They don't say beware. No one on the news, on the normal news, says beware. This is a slippery slope. Once we agree to this, the balloons are going to be tracking you. They try to sell it. Oh, you don't have to have your wallet. You're not going to get it pickpocketed. They they try to give you all these BS excuses to get you to accept that it's okay and normal to walk around with your phone tracking you for the government all day because that's how it starts. And then the slope drops off pretty quickly to where you're in tyranny and you're living in China. Like that. You can tell me that's a slippery slope all you want, but there have been a lot of slippery slopes lately. Watch the rise and fall of any country. Any country. And it's playing out right for our eyes. Just, but, yeah, no. But you know what? Just gets keep me? asking questions and keep. But it comes right back to this, okay? Talking about if you're a white male, you're a racist no matter what. And in this case, you're a, xeno- you're a xenophobe, which means you don't like anyone but white people. And that's why we don't want people crossing the border because of the color of their skin. Uh, no, that has absolutely nothing to do with any of it. Obviously, it has everything to do with our people getting first crack at these jobs, right? Like not just jobs. For me, I don't even care about the jobs. But I care it's about also the fentanyl that's coming yeah. in. That apparently, so now we're the trafficking people more now than ever. Ever. I don't think people understand how many kids go missing and never are found in the U.S., much less around the world. Yeah, like, like, that's a stat. It's 800,000 a year, I would, no, I but would then it drops down. I would recommend looking it up. Like yeah. our, our viewers should look it up because it doesn't do justice until you actually read it and see it. Like, you know, obviously you can hear us say it, but mm-hmm. it's just, where are they going? And Who has them? It's at the point where, like, I almost believe legit – Another country, like a reputable country, probably could bring the United States up on human smuggling charges before, like, I don't know, World Court or whatever, like, just like they do for war crimes. The, the United States, and they've been doing it for years, but human smuggling, drug smuggling, like, but we're xenophobes because, you know. We don't want the border wide open. I wouldn't listen to anything that woman says. All you nah. Do is watch her I ask saw questions. Because she's a looker. dumbest freaking person. Um, and she got caught. She should be in jail for the whole thing with the DNC and that whole sellout. But no, you're a Democrat. You don't ever go to jail. No, there's a two-tiered justice system. Yes. Sure is. What are you looking for? I was just seeing all the numbers. Like I was on the FBI's database. I looked this up one day because I was actually I have it right here. I do. I mean, I know. You, I think so, you said eight hundred. Here we go. Here we go. I literally oh, have you everything you want exactly. An estimated forty million people worldwide, and fifty thousand people in the United States are victims of human trafficking. So, 
um, every year it's that estimated like 800,000. But then when you break it down, okay, kids that went missing and they were found an hour later and all that. But roughly 50,000 people in the United States are victims of human trafficking. Sef tra sex trafficking uh, has been reported in all 50 states. The most human trafficking cases that have been reported in California, Texas, Florida, and Los Angeles, is, uh, Las Vegas is a hot spot. Um, there are more than 365,000 missing children in our country each year. 30% of those missing are being trafficked, about 109,000 kids, which those numbers kind of contradicts the top one. But um, but I know when I was looking at this, like it's like it was a stu it was a crazy number, like 800,000. But then obviously that keeps in track of the kids that go missing, but then came back. But if they're saying 50,000 are victims of so that's about that's point oh one four percent of our population yeah so uh, you know in the grand scheme of things when you that, that's fifty thousand out of three hundred and fifty million i mean this stat is sixty percent of all children were recovered before being trafficked so the number of actual people that would have been trafficked is much higher except they were and this is all from uh, savedinamerica.org. There's a website like this company or whatever works on saving kids from being sex trafficked and trafficked in general. Like yeah. this is something that should be on. Like this is something we should be talking about. Yeah, I Drugs mean, I, I'm not even talking about, about like the conspiracies or anything else. Just the data. This is legit. Like yeah, no, just the data. It's it's appalling. But we're all too busy bailing out banks, worried about Ukraine, you know, just everything. It's all a distraction. Of, like, this could be your children. It's like, people don't ask themselves that. It could be your kid or your family member that gets hooked on drugs. It's not just, oh, that's some druggie that's a throwaway. Well, you know what? That druggie throwaway was someone's or is someone's loved one. And... We just let it happen. How did I miss when this movie was released? What is it? Sound of Freedom. Hmm. I don't know. I, I, I watched the trailer, I don't know, a couple of years ago. It says it was released in 2022. But it's basically, it touches on what we're talking about based on a true story. The story of Tim Ballard, a former U.S. government agent who quits his job in order to devote his life to rescuing children from global sex traffickers. So I've been wanting to see this, and so now I'm trying to find where I can watch it. So I wonder if it's been released yet. It says it has. It's, got, it's been rated. There was another movie I watched with the kids. Man, I wish I remember the name of it now, but um, it was basically the same thing. And, the, like, there was just, like, this church actually was like trying to free kids and it was and we showed it and this was one of these good looking boyfriend that this girl had and basically he's been doing this all the time and he sells these girls that he tracks you know in his car they go out on a date and he sells them to this gang and then this gang obviously puts them in the sex trade and everything and like we obviously watched the movie with the kids like see this is like you don't know who you're talking to on the internet you don't know just because there's a picture, just like you don't know who these people are. Um, it was, a, and I, I don't remember the name of it now. It was a couple of years ago. Um, yeah. So it was released on January 1st, 2022. Interesting. So it's supposed to be out on April 11th? That's not. I mean, I've been waiting for this movie because I like Jim Caviezel. He's in it. He was the one that played uh, Jesus. He's in, I don't know, a, bunch of, a few different movies, but he, he seems like a good good guy from the interviews I've seen with him. But anyway, The Sound of Freedom is supposed to highlight just how bad it is. I didn't think it actually had been released because I feel like I would have watched it already. I would have found it. No clue. No, so it wasn't released because this is updated in May of 2022. Let me see. It's not that big a deal. It's just set yourselves apart from corrupt generation. Be saints. You're 
not made to fit in. You were born to stand out. That's a quote from Jim Caviezel. I thought it was going to give me more information. Yeah, I can't find what that movie was, but but people like wake up. Yeah, so the conspiracy is is they keep blocking it from being released. I didn't think it was released yet. I've been waiting for years. I'm telling you, I watched the preview for this a couple years ago. So it could just also be Yeah, all they have is the official trailer that came out on July 30th, 2020. They probably talked about Epstein too much and other people. I wonder why I can't find it. I don't know. Anyway, it's it's, but it's supposed to show, because he worked for our government, and then he was like, this is too, so he quit, and he went out on his own to do it because it's so bad. It's so horrible for these kids. It's good to know that there are men allegedly like this gentleman that's based on doing that. This would be a good thing for like SEAL teams to do. Retired. Yeah, yeah you would think, yeah. Yeah. That would be that would be awesome. Yeah, so just the trailers are out still, so I don't know why it said it was released. Because you can't watch it anywhere. It's got an IMDB rating and everything, but I can't find it. And in the articles I do say, we're like, why is it? Maybe it's out there. The Sound of Freedom, free plug for the eighth time to just go, you know. To, well, to, to, to sh it shows how horrible life is. People don't realize that there are bad things going on out there. I mean, maybe they do, but I don't know. It just bothers me. I don't like to see kids hurt. Yeah, I mean, I don't like to hear about it. I don't want to imagine it. Like, even watching this movie it would probably be a struggle. Yeah, I struggle with movies like that. I don't. But it's one that I'm t I've been waiting since 2020 for it to come out. So for them to say it's been released on IMDb, but you can't find it anywhere, I... who knows? Yeah. All right, we'll wrap up the hundredth show. Ready? We have this. Let's see if you can do it right this time. Woohoo. Question. Who's going to pick this shit up? Uh, we're going to vacuum clean it tomorrow. Producer, we don't have. Yeah, if John me. Paul would have stayed, then we could have had him directing and producing us. He would have kept me from looking up this Jim Caviezel movie for four minutes, wasting everybody's time. Yeah, he would have done it for you. And like, boom, you would have had the information. Yeah. Way to go, John Paul. Blame yeah. it on you. Have a great time in Boston. <laughs> Bet they didn't get any snow down there. <laughs> um, so, yeah, thank you so much for watching our 100th episode. Uh, stay tuned. Well, we'll have another show before then, but stay tuned for next week because we're going to put that show together of the stuff we talked about with Stevens and everything. And, like, get involved. Like, you know, there's a Sackboats meeting on Monday, and then... Next Thursday is a school board meeting. So there's opportunities to be involved and ask questions and or sit there and watch or like whatever. Uh, the reason we're in the position we're in now is because it's our country was formed with checks and balances. Well, there's been no checks. There's been no balances. It's just been a free for all. And we've we're too busy with our own lives to pay attention to what's going on. And you know what's important okay we get kids being sex trafficked human trafficked you have drugs killing so many people if all these things yet yeah, we just accept it like why do we accept it who says we can't do nothing about drugs we can't do nothing about this i don't we buy can't that. do anything about the border right we can't, we can't do, do anything about, about right child trafficking i mean this guy if you know the movie's based on he tried what happened to the country that, you know, 60 years ago could do anything? Anything. Anything. Like, you didn't mess with the United States because you knew, shoot, you don't mess with those people. Because those people will get it done and they'll find a way. What happened to that? Because I still want to believe that, no, we're still those people. And if you want to F with our kids, then 
we're gonna fuck you up. You want to mess with our families and get them addicted to drugs, whether it's illegal or pharmaceutical. Enough's enough. We're just getting poor. They're taxing you more and more and more. They're bailing out anybody but you. They're never going to bail you out. No. And the state of New Hampshire doesn't even fund education, which they're constitutionally bound to do. Yet citizens have to sue them to get them to do their job. After they've already been sued once and they said, and yes, you're not, yeah. Yeah, you're not doing yeah. what you're supposed to. Yeah. This goes to my shirt. It says, we the people are pissed off. You should be pissed off. You should get involved because this is not just your life. Like this is your kids, your grandkids. This is it. Yeah, and all it takes is your voice. You don't have to. You know, just stand up and be heard. You don't have to be the best speaker. No, just show up in numbers. Yeah, just show up and sit with your arms crossed and stare broodingly at us and the select board. Keep us on our toes. Yeah. Because you might hear something that says, oh, wait, have they thought about this? What are they doing about this, that, or the other? Because there's only five on each board. And I will answer to any decision I've ever made on any board openly and say, yeah, this is why I made that decision. And you might look and be like, well, that's not the right decision. Well, that's why I made this decision. So now you know because that's so much of it is why did you do this? You're never going to know. Like if I don't hear from people, then I, I go back to what did I run on? How do people expect me to – how would I expect someone who ran with my you know, platform of holding people to account and making the schools better? And am I doing that? Are we doing that? And I think that we, we're trying. I'm telling you right now. The, like, the teachers, I feel like they're committed. The administration's committed. Like I would say, especially at the school, like if you aren't good at public speaking, which a lot of people aren't. Like I'm not great at it. I'm getting better. But like send a letter. You can email Steve or me. Or you can email any of them, Jenna, Bird. any of them, and say, hey, I'd like you to read this during public comment. Okay. That is an option. You have that option as a citizen in this town. And, I mean, honestly, I mean, we, the board. I'll do it at the select board meeting if you got you don't want to speak. And I'll read a you, letter. You spoke on my behalf yeah. whenever they were doing the revals. Yeah. That's when we need a lot of people to show up as... I, I wonder if anybody else had I, They said that they found all of them, like it wasn't just a mistake on mine. Yeah. But I want, there might be somebody out there whose revaluation is up higher because of something as simple as they have the wrong value of your hot tub or your pole barn or your woodshed or the eight pavers between your back door and your side garage that yeah. get you taxed. Did you know that? I'm it's, taxed for those pavers out there. It's all crooked crap. The nicer your house, the more we're going to shaft you out of your hard-earned money. Now, if you live in a tar paper shack, that's okay. But even the tar paper shacks, I think, got oh, yeah. an increase in value. Shafting them, too. But like, yeah, they shafted everybody. The harder you work, the more they take from you. So maybe that answers why people 20 to 28 aren't working. They saw it. They're smarter than us? Yeah. Maybe that's the yeah. case. Maybe they're smarter and they're like, it's not worth getting this worked up over Tim and Steve. Yeah. Yeah. Here's some paperwork you can fill out and start getting some, you know, food stamps and whatever else. I mean, I've said this before. Like, I'd be tough on people that just sit on welfare and, uh, you know, don't try to improve. Yeah, don't, their don't try to improve. But then I said this before on the show. I'll say it now. Like, maybe they're just smarter than me. Why mm. work when. Most of what you make is going to go to the government anyways, and you're going to live at the same level, or they just give it all to you. I mean, personally, I have personal pride. And, yeah. But that's what. But America, I can understand. That's the old America that we were brought up in. I mean, you're getting robbed. Face it. Yeah, you're we're getting being robbed. robbed. Our tax dollars are being stolen from us. Yes. They're not being executed in the manner of which we all yeah. feel like the majority has spoken and said, eh, I don't really want you spending my money on this, that, or the other. Yep. From the lowest level all the way up to federal government. Yep. And really, we should, if this were a perfect world, we'd be focused more on New Hampshire politics day in and day out because the national would never come into play because it's not really supposed to. Power of the states. But that's not the case. Federal government's got states. Those are actually, you know, in some circles, that's that's bad thinking right there. If you want the states to have the power that they were 
mm-hmm. intended to have underneath the you know our federalism, our constitutional republic, yeah. or as people say that make me want to vomit, our democracy. Nope, we're a constitutional public. Our democracy depends on you admitting that it's a democracy, Tim. Nope, constitutional republic. They want you to call, start doing that because they want to get you to think that mob rules, because that's, that's, that's all democracy is, is mob rule. Right, they don't. And then if you can somehow, not that it you know, has been proven you know, in some people's eyes, but you rig a vote, right? And then you're all stuck, and you all think that you have... I don't know. I just I'm, I, I I question everything. It's okay to question authority. You don't have to do exactly now. If a cop says, "Put yeah. your hands up," put well, your hands up. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's common sense. And then you know, then talk your way out of de-escalating that situation because I exactly. But you don't just start arguing with a cop because that's not going to end well for anyone. No, nope. because they're and it's not that cops are bad. By the way, it's because their adrenaline is up. Because they think that they've caught something, and you don't. Hey, that dude in Webster caught that dude was sixty-eight pounds of marijuana. He's an idiot. That cop had a good day. Yeah, that one's like, damn. Did that not explode? They did. Paper still in there. All right, you tried to wrap this up five minutes ago. Oh, you just keep talking. I'm sorry. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching, and uh, yeah, we'll see you next time on Tim and Steve Show. Artless.io.